I think the hard problem of consciousness is not a problem to be solved. I think it's an internal contradiction uh, of the physicalist way of thinking, because, you know, the world we have, the world we inhabit is a world of qualities, colors, flavors, uh, melodies, and tradition or historically, uh, uh, scientists began using quantities or numbers to describe that world. But at some point, we replaced the thing described with the description. We said matter is what really exists, and matter is exhaustively described with a list of numbers. <clears throat> and the qualities, they are somehow uh, 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 created or generated by the brain inside our skulls. When Bernardo describes science, I think he's not describing actual science. I think he's describing a philosopher um, oversimplification of a particular moment of science in the 18th century in which the idea of science was very, very little balls pulling and pushing one another. Uh, and it's sort of hard to think that little stones pulling and pushing one another make uh, something like our subjective experience. That's not, that's, that's not what science is. Science is much more rich. And the conceptual tools of science are not just numbers and relation between numbers, are qualitative. We, uh, we describe qualitative reality with science, not just how many things there are. Or, 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 or the, the numbers are tools for describing what is going on. So I agree that the relation between ourselves and the world has to be not a relation of uh, uh, the world is he, that, it, but is a relation like me and you. I am part of the world. I relate to the world as, as a part of it. And Carl, in the case of Carlo, uh, he defends the notion that all physical entities are relational, like movement. Movement is relational. But of course, for movements to exist, there has to be that which moves. Something needs to move in relation to something else. And these two things cannot be movement for us to speak of movement. It avoids the implication of his own theory by going into the fallacy of infinite regress, by saying that it's relations all the way down. This is how the current uh, paradigm tries to survive today through a combination of hand-waving, empirical negligence, and uh, appeals to fallacies. 10 years, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, many people were under the impression that in order to understand life, something absolutely, uh, some quantum leap was needed because life is radically different. It's obviously radically different than non-life. There is a gap between the two. So you need a, an elan vital, a, force, a vitalist force to explain it. And nobody thinks about that, not because we have understood what is life, because life is just a complex phenomenon. A lot of things is, is, is happening, a lot of thermodynamics, a lot of biochemistry, a lot of complexity, a lot of interrelations between things. So with a better understanding, it just lost all its, uh, not its interest, it's super interesting, and of course, there are many things we don't understand yet, but we see how it's just a part of the natural world, uh, which we can account. Uh, it is a general way of understanding things which science has. This is not a science being too pretentious, pretentious to explain everything. It's the other way around. I think it's those who say, look, it's impossible that science could explain that, that pretend to have a, uh, a, 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 a certainty about rational thinking that shows that something is impossible. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at IAI-TV.